Hello everyone, welcome back to another Lockdown Late War Battle Report. Today's game is against uh, Sherry and Dave and it is the fourth mission in the German D-Day book. So Sherry is attacking in this mission and she is using a Canadian rifle company consisting of a HQ and three full platoons of Canadian infantry. Also in this formation we have three WESPs as you can see at the back and we have four HMG carriers and we have three universal carriers upgraded with 50 cals and at the back we have six three inch mortars in support we have three Churchill crocodiles four Saxtons and four M10s and we also have a universal carrier OP so command cards obviously the Canadian Relentless card uh, that basically is two points per rifle platoon and that affects the rifle platoons and the HQ and it changes the 5 plus war weary to Canadian Relentless Rally on a 3 plus. Other command cards are the 50 cal carriers, uh, that's an extra point for the universal carriers and the Sexton Field Troop which basically is minus two points of the Priest Field Troop and obviously you get the stats uh, slightly worse for the Sextons but they're mounted 25 pounders for whoever hasn't used them before so a good mix of infantry and Sherry is going to be using the night attack rules this game because Dave is defending and he has minefields because the mission is rear guard so a lot of infantry for the British but a little bit more for the Germans and let's have a look so Dave is defending again with his tried and tested Um We have a company of them and we have three platoons of them, as I said. Quite a few infantry in this list. So we have the HQ, which is just two SMG teams. And we have two full platoons of Foskrimjäger and they have Panzerfausts and they also have an additional heavy machine gun added as well. The third platoon is slightly shorter, uh, I think it's just seven bases in this one, and we have Panzerfausts and one Panzerschreck added to these. That is not it for the Falschirmjäger though, we also have four 8cm Stummel mortars at the back. Uh, sorry, no, those are the heavy machine guns, and right at the back you can see the Stummel mortars so quite a hefty platoon for the Falschkermjäger here um, lucky for Sherry, uh, Dave will have to withdraw units from turn 2 onwards so she has time uh, in support we have three WESPs or VESPs I have to remember that the German W sounds like a V uh, with them is a Panzer III OP that the Germans have found in uh, desert colours but lucky they had it because they can spot artillery for them uh, we also have four Falschgrimjäger Stugs in support and as you can see the dreaded Flak 88s at the back as well so here is the German list um, as I said before the mission is rear guard and this is the fourth mission in the German D-Day book and as a result of the last mission Dave gets an extra minefield token to place bringing his total to 5. So a lot of new things in play today, um, Canadians and also night attack and let's not forget the Churchill Crocodiles with their massive front armour 11, I think even the Flak 88s might have some problems with them today, especially at night. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to this game and so is Sherry and Dave and let's have a look at the board and objectives before these models ruin everything. So Sherry and Dave are hooked up on our group chat and they're ready to go. Uh, so here we have the objectives for the Canadians, one behind a hill by here and one behind this little crossroad town. As you can see Dave has put his minefields everywhere where there's a gap in the terrain apart from this hill which is a bit of a gap. And then we have the British deployment behind these dice, some ranged in markers and um, another minefield and stuff on the road. So this is the board and now we're going to deploy and then we're ready to kick off. So we are now fully deployed. Uh, we have Stugs on the left flank with a full platoon of Falschermjäger on the right and the Stummel mortars behind. In this small building and the cafe adjoining we have the HQ and the small platoon of Falschermjäger, the one with the Panzerschreck 
over here. On the right flank we have the OP on the hill surrounded by another platoon of Falschermjäger with the heavy machine guns pushed up to the hedge. In the woods we have the Vesps and the Flak 88s. No one seems to be able to see them yet so they'll pop out at some point. On the left flank for the British we have the Observation Universal Carrier by here next to a platoon of Canadian infantry. Over further we have the 50 cal carriers and the mortars. In the middle of the road we have the wasps and the Churchill. so all the flamethrowers are in the centre of the board. Next to them is another platoon of Canadians and then we have the Saxtons, the M10s, the Vickers carriers and the third final platoon of Canadians and the HQ. So that is deployment and British now have first turn. So Sherry has finished her movement. Uh, one of the things with night attack is you can't move faster than tactical um, and terrain dash. So not very far for movement. So these infantry have moved up, tried to do a follow me, but have failed. Universal Carrier has terrain dashed and they have plenty of movement. 50 cals have just tacticaled. Obviously the mortars have stayed still. The wasps have pushed up the road. Um, this is as far as they can get before going to the minefield. These guys unfortunately didn't pass a follow me and now are stuck under a mortar template. And the infantry here has um, successfully followed me into the woods and the vicar's carriers are behind them as well. So now we're going to see if Sherry can see anything with their guns and we're going into British shooting. So in the shooting, um, many things couldn't actually see very far. The UCC here managed to shoot some HMGs but didn't hit anything. Uh, the mortars tried to range in but were unsuccessful because um, when you range in at night it's plus one harder to hit. And another thing I should point out, when you want to shoot something at night, you have to roll a dice and consult a chart. And that is as far as it is that is the limit of their line of sight. So anything beyond that they can't see and also when you do shoot at stuff it's also plus one harder to hit at night as well. So it was basically sevens to hit these even though they were short range. But there was some activity further up the table. We did have a successful ranging attempt by the, sec uh, by the Saxtons on their second attempt. Hit the Falskamiga platoon so they're pinned but no kills and we did have a bit of drama with a Stug because Dave rolled a 1 on his armour save, but then Sherry also rolled a 1 on a firepower, so this Stug will survive for another day. So, Dave, your start-up step, you have a bailed-out Stug. Okay. Um, I rolled a 6 on the So he is back in. Shrugged that off. And you also have a pinned down Falskrim Jaeger platoon. Okay. And I roll a one on that. Right, so they remain pinned, so they're not moving any closer to my uh, to Sherry's guys this turn. And the next thing you need to do, Dave, is are you going to pop your ambush this turn? Uh, I am, yeah. Okay, right, so we'll figure out where Dave is going to put them, and we'll see where they are in the movement recap. So in the movement, uh, Dave has pushed the Stugs up to here so you can take out some universal carriers and maybe if he rolls lucky on the, the night range he might be able to get a bit more. Uh, the pin down Falskram Jäger that had been ranged in have moved back and they had a successful follow me so they pushed back a bit further. Here is where the Flak 88s have turned up. Good position, they can see down the road to the left and to the right. Uh, obviously they'll have to split their fire because there is some tall terrain in the way. Everything else has remained stationary so now we're going into shooting for German turn 1. So as I summarised the shooting step I just remembered another night fighting rule. Um, when a unit fires at night it basically has a muzzle flash token so instead I'm putting a D6 next to them and what that means is, is when a unit shoots at them they don't need to roll to see how far they can see because they're shooting at the muzzle flashes but it's still plus one harder to hit. So what has fired this turn? The um, Vesps have ranged in um, 
Where did they range in? Oh, they ranged in on the road and they managed to take out a wasp. So the Vesps are firing at the wasps. And at one point I will mess up which one is meant to be a V. Okay, so that is done. Um, these ones fired, but in the British turn. The Flak 88s fired and they tried to hit these, but they missed because that was the only thing they could see at their uh, night vision range. Um, the Canadians lost a rifle team, sadly, to the mortars that were ranged in here, and the Stugs managed to kill and bail a HMG carrier. So there has been some casualties this turn, but the British should have some easier shots next turn because of the muzzle flashes. So we're going into British turn two. So, start up step for the British. Um, Sherry, you have a bailed out heavy machine gun carrier. Sherry? Yes? So, on a four plus, I guess, back in? Purple. Okay, cool. And then you're rallying your Canadian platoon on a three plus because of their relentless rule. Okay, so they're unpinned as well. So we're going into British turn two. So with movement, the British platoon here has moved up onto the hill. The 50 cal carriers have moved up. The wasps, uh, one of them managed to cross the wall here and can now shoot at the HMGs with its terrible flamethrower. Uh, the other one stuck here. Apart from this team here, the rest of the infantry are in this church. The HMG carriers are going to remain stationary so they can pop down a template using uh, their Vickers machine guns as artillery. And the platoon and the HQ moved up here and then failed their follow me even with the reroll from the HQ. So they're stuck in the open for now. But it's still night. Well, for now anyway. So we're going into British shooting. So uh, British shooting uh, for their second turn was very unsuccessful. Uh, these can't see very far at all, so they didn't fire. The 50 cal carriers missed the HMGs, and so did the Wasp. Uh, these guys just can't range in. Uh, the Churchills are too far away to see anything. Uh, one of these guys tried to fire into this building, but missed. Um, they hit, but the infantry was saved. Sexton's managed to range in by here. Um, hit a stug, but the armour was bounced. The M10s missed the stugs right in front of them. It is night time, remember. And these guys tried to range in by here and failed. And everything else couldn't fire. So we're going into German turn two. Dave, you have a, um, a pin down Falskam Jäger platoon to do first. So I'll bring that over here. Uh, the rally on a six. Okay, nice. And then you have a unit to get rid of for resi uh, no, First of all, we have, um, so it's basically seven or less. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so Dave has to withdraw a unit this turn. So what do you want to withdraw, Dave? Um, I want to go over there. So I'll have to pick up the phone so he can see as well. So this is how it works, guys. We have um, FaceTime app with a group and iVideo recaps in between everything and these guys on the phone here making the decisions. So it's kind of like, uh, almost like RAF command in the Battle of Britain where I'm getting radioed in and I'm moving things on the board and they're rolling dice. So uh, we'll get back to you with what he's going to remove because I'll have to pan over the table for him to make a decision. Uh, so uh, after an hour of uh, decision making, uh, Dave has um, got rid of the mortars. Uh, he has been um, interesting. He has pushed up his Falskam Jäger platoon here with a follow me with the hope of assaulting these universal carriers. And then we realised how many shots these HMGs can put into them. So they'll probably bail some of them at least. And then we're trying to keep them out of this um, 
minefield. Apart from that, nothing else moved, so we're going into German shooting for their second turn. So in the shooting, the massive bulk of dice from the MG42s didn't do anything, but the Flak 88s managed to knock out um, well, bail to universal carriers, but for the case with assaults, they might as well be dead, because they will be. Um, furthermore, uh, the artillery ranged in and managed to pin the teams in the church. Uh, one of the teams died because of the rifle fire from the uh, Falcon Mega in this building, and the Stugs took out a infantry team using their MGs, and then they have shoot and scooted as much behind the building as they possibly can. So we're going into assaults for the Germans on their second turn. I don't think there's much cover fire coming in for these. He's too far away from his range, and I think these are way out anyway. So we'll probably see some dead universal carriers here. So this is how the assault ended up. Uh, the Falsch Amiga did lose a team going in. Um, they didn't kill anything in an assault, but the um, Universal Carrier failed its counterattack. So the remaining one had to pull back, while the other two got blown up, unfortunately. So going into the startup step, Sherry, you have a pinned down Canadian team in the church, rallying on a three. Okay, so they're rallied, and then there's another one by the woods with the HQ team. Sorry. Yeah. There's another one to rally as well. Okay. Okay, so they're rallied, and now you have a last stand test to do on the universal carrier. <laughs> okay, so that is not enough. So he drives away. And now we're going into the movement for the British. The infantry have remained still on the hill. Um, the wasp again failed to get over the um, wall. And we have the infantry moving up out of the building. Um, not sure whether to do a last stand check on these because they have taken a hit for the unit leaders by the not sure. Have a co have a comment, uh, see what I should have done. But I think they are okay for now. Um these infantry have moved over here and again these guys remain stationary and hope they will try and range in again. But this mark will have to move back because these are too close now. So we're going into British shooting for their third turn. So British shooting, the mortars finally ranged in, the first time as well on the hill, so they've pinned both um, Falsch Gamega platoon and HMG platoons, fortunately no kills, but they are ranged in. Uh, the Wasp again hasn't managed to hit anything. Um, this building here has taken some fire from the Saxtons and the infantry. Uh, the HQ team is pinned down, but the platoon in there is still not pinned down. Apart from that, that there was no kills. So we're going to go into an assault, I think. Uh, let's see what Sherry decides. Uh, so we did have an assault. Um, the infantry platoon in the building got four hits, but then the pinned down SMG teams got two more hits, so that forced the infantry back, and then they lost two teams because of the fire. So because we're going into Dave's turn three, at the start of your turn, Dave, roll one dice, because on a five, Dawn is broken. Can I roll one dice, sir? One dice. I get four. So, it's still night. Uh, Dave has two pinned down units, as I can see. He has a pinned down Falskamiga platoon on the hill. It's actually three platoons. So, the team on the hill, Dave? So this is still pinned. The HMG team. The two. And the HQ team in the building. The two. Uh, but you get the reroll for that one, my friend. A three. Okay, so they uh, are. And you know the, with the HQ, because wouldn't I get a reroll for the infantry team next to them as well? Yeah, but they're not. They're not pinned. 
Okay, right, so you have another decision to make, Dave. What unit are you going to be pulling off the table? Right, so you have your HMD, HMG team and your infantry platoon on the hill that's pinned. So you can see them there and there. Uh, I'll, I'll take out the, um, the HMG team this turn. Okay. Right for me so far, so. Okay, so they will go and we'll be going into German movement. So for German movement, Dave has moved the Falskrimiga back towards the objective. Some of them still might be under the template, but there's a lot less than there were. Um, see, no HMGs there anymore. Um, furthermore, these Stugs have moved back out of sight of the M10s, still in the position to fire here and here. And these guys have finally dug in, which is good for them. So now we're going into German shooting. So in German shooting, uh, the Grenadiers had some shots at the infantry, didn't get many hits. The uh, Vesps uh, ranged in using the HQ of the Falskrim Jäger onto the Churchills. Did get a hit, but as you can guess, it bounced. Not many guys left in this platoon, only two, so they will be last standing. Um, this Wasp will be last standing, because um, it's outside of six inches of the other one, and they have taken a hit. So there's only one remaining. He didn't do anything last turn, so it hasn't affected the game. So uh, um, shame on me, anyway, for not really doing that properly. But uh, it's okay. Apart from that, no more, no more casualties to the British. So starting Sherry's turn, Sherry, you have two dice to roll, and on a five, dawn breaks. The sun has arisen. We are no, you, no longer using night fighting rules. So the sun is up, and first of all, we have um, pin tests. So, Sherry, the Canadians by the church are unpinning on A3. We get a one. Ooh, so they're still pinned. And now we have a couple of last stand tests. So for the wasps, uh, if you roll for them for their last stand... And their last stand is a four. Oh, yeah. Right, so they are okay. And then we also have a last stand on the Canadian platoon that is only that is down to two bases. Five. five. So five. So they're pinned, but they're staying in the game. And that is it for motivation. I can't see anything more. And now we're going into British movement. And now the sun is shining. There's a lot more visible. So in the movement, these Canadians tried to dig in on the hill. They didn't do it. Um, the wasp finally joined his friend, so they will not have the fear of last standing anymore. Um, so yeah, that's okay. Uh, the pinned down infantry here tried to dig in, they didn't. The Churchills have moved, and because of their trailers, they are still under the template. And everything else has pushed forward, and the infantry and the HQ are pushing across the fields here, right in view of the Stugs. But maybe the M10s might be able to help them if they can see anything. So we're going into British shooting in the first turn of daylight. So in the shooting, the mortars managed to hit two more Faschkermager, no deaths though. The Saxtons have ranged in here, got one hit, but no kills. Um, there's a lot of firepower being going into this building, still no kills. And a Stug has been bailed out. So we're going into German turn four. Dave, you have a bailed out Stug. Okay, um, he is within six inches of the unit leader. I will double check that. So don't roll it yet, Dave. I will check. Yeah, he is. No, nah, he's out. Uh, but you do have a pin down platoon in the building as well, rallying on a three. Yeah, they rally on a six. Okay, and you also have the pin down Foscom Jaegers on the hill. Uh, they get a 
Oh, so they're still pinned. And you have your Flak 88s as well, that rallying on a three or a four for them. I get a six. Oops, so they're unpinned. And we have currently one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Dave needs to withdraw another unit this turn. So we'll check with him what he wants to get rid of. So the platoon of seven in the building that has taken so much fire has been given a tap on the shoulder and they've pulled back out of this battlefield. So there'll be another turn if uh, Sherry doesn't kill any units of Dave withdrawing stuff before he starts getting delay tokens. And as for movement, there were none because Dave is happy where he is and so we're going into German shooting for their turn four. So German shooting, a uh, Flak 88 managed to take out an infantry base on the hill. Everything else, uh, these this infantry platoon here is running into a gauntlet of fire from here and from this platoon here. Uh, they were pinned because of the amount of hits and I think they lost about three teams in that round of firing. So going into British turn five, um, there are no bailed out tanks. Sherry, you have a pinned down team in the fields rallying on a three plus. I got one. You get a one, but you get a re-roll because of the formation command. Another one, yeah. so they're pinned. And you have a pinned team right outside the church as well. Yeah, I got two. So they're pinned, and you also have a last stand to do them on them. Yeah, I got three. All right, so they are running away. So we're going into British movement for turn five. So the British infantry have moved up off the hill, pushing for this objective. Uh, the wasps are struggling to get over walls, as they have been for the entire game. And Churchill's are struggling to get through hedges. One did, one moved around, which is smart of him. And one HMG carrier moved to let the one pass. M10s had to move up, because the um, HMG carriers were blocking their shots. This infantry platoon that was pinned tried to dig in, but uh, didn't work, but the HQ is dug in. And that is it for British movement on their fifth turn, so we're going into shooting. So lots of firepower going onto the hill, still no kills on this platoon. Um, Dave has lost a Flak 88 to the Sexton's bombardment. Uh, the M10s uh, didn't hit any Stugs. And these guys in here, the two teams, took literal fire from the crocodiles but no one died and firepower from infantry platoons heavy machine gun universal carriers but no deaths but they are pinned um so we're going into german turn five we have one two three four five and six so they will be withdrawing but there is um pinned down and bailed out tanks so dave you have a bailed out stug Okay, uh, you have a pin down HQ team. Uh, they got a six. Right, so he's unpinned. And then you have your pinned down platoon on the hill. Uh, two. Oh, so they're still pinned. And you have your pin down flak 88s. Five. Right, so they are unpinned. Okay, so you have a choice to make now to see what we would draw, and then we're going into German movement. So there is a VESP shaped hold in this forest because they have withdrawn. Uh, these uh, grenadier, uh, sorry, no, not grenadiers, Falsch and Mega have shuffled around a bit to try and maximize their fire on the team coming across the river. Still, uh, most of them can get shots, some of them are going to have to wait until next turn and we have to remember that a few of them are not in foxholes anymore. Um, the platoon at the back field here has moved across in support of the Stugs and the formation commander tactically moved through these buildings and did a follow me so now he is in this end building on the objective along with one, two, three other platoons that are currently holding it. So we're going into German shooting and they're well in control of these objectives at the moment. 
So, um, some extra shots from the hill from the Panzer III OP because uh, he has nothing to spot for anymore, so he fired at the infantry. They lost two more bases, but no pin marker for them. Um, Flak 88 had nothing to shoot at, so they've gone to ground. Uh, over here, the Stugs managed to kill and bail an M10, and the infantry managed to survive a bit of fire from the Falschkammerjäger over here. So, going into British turn 6. Uh, Sherry has a bailed out M10. Sherry? Uh, got a one. Uh, you get a re-roll from the formation commander. Uh, two. Okay, and then you have your pinned down Canadian rifle platoon. Uh, six. Okay, they are unpinned. Right, so that is everything, all the motivations done for the British, and now we're going into their movement. So in the movement, the Canadian infantry here decided to go across the river rather than going across a bridge into a minefield. Need fours to go across these rivers uh, for infantry, uh, only two managed to get over. Um, this wasp could not get over the wall. Um, furthermore, this uh, this Churchill here did get over, and the infantry ma failed to dig in again. Uh, so we're going into British shooting for their sixth turn. So British shooting, uh, not much happening here. No kills. Uh, they still remain pinned down from previous turns of fire. Uh, another Flak 88 has gone. Uh, the M10s again have failed to hit anything and the infantry here have gone to ground since this uh, as an extra one to hit anyway so there we go um that is british turn six again pretty ineffective going into the german turn dave you have a bailed out stug yeah uh, he's backing on a four rock nice uh you have a pin down flak 88 team Okay, and then you have your pin down uh, Falsch Omega on the hill. Uh, no, they're still pinned on a two. Okay, so at the moment we have one, two, three, four, five. So Dave will gain a delay counter. So he's not withdrawing anything this turn. So we're going into German movement for their sixth turn. German movement, very simple to recap. There is none. Uh, these guys can't move towards the British because they're pinned, so they're just going to stay where they are. Uh, so we're going straight into German shooting, and we'll probably see a lot of uh, dead Canadians, unfortunately. So German shooting. Uh, the Stugs managed to kill another M10 and bail another one. Uh, three more bases have been killed uh, from this platoon, so they'll be last standing as well, courtesy of this Falskermaker platoon by here. Um, and another two, another team of infantry were killed on the other side of the river and that unit is pinned as well and that is it for German shooting. So going into British turn 7, uh, Sherry you have a uh, two bailed out M10s going back in on 4s. Oh, that's one five. Right, so they're both back in, so they're okay. Uh, you have a pinned down rifle team in the uh, field. Uh, go free. They rally and then you've got a pinned down unit by the river. And they rally as well. So uh, you have a last stand test to do on the guys in the field. Uh, go fly. Right, so they're okay. So that is everyone still on the board, and now we have British movement for their seventh turn. Uh, British movement, two more teams got over the river, so put him here to say that he didn't make it over. The Wasp again still will not go over this wall, and neither with a Churchill over here. Two Churchills did manage to do that so they can shoot at these Stugs. Um, the infantry have finally dug in, the heavy machine gun carriers have moved to here, and the M10s remain stationary. So we're going into British shooting for their seventh turn. 
so shooting over here, um, one team got taken out by the mortars. Um, the Saxons managed to range in again, hit but no kills, and the M10s managed to kill something. Uh, so we are going into an assault, and it's going to be over here. So hopefully this will go a bit better for the British. So with this assault, initially went quite well for the Canadians. Uh, they didn't take any casualties going in, and they wiped out three bases right in front of them. The Fast Grimmiega counter-attacked, killed two bases, and then the Canadians had enough and failed the rally and have retreated back across the river successfully. So they're outside eight inches and that's how that assault has ended up. So going into German turn seven, Dave, you have a pin down unit on the hill, which has been pinned down for quite some time now. And then you have your pin down flak 88s. Five. Right, so they are unpinned. So we need to count again. We have one, two, three, four, five, and a delay counter, which brings you up to six. So Dave, you have to withdraw a unit, and we'll uh, quiz him on that now. So German movement, uh, this platoon here is remaining on the hill, happy where they are. Uh, the platoon here has pulled back to cover the objective more. And the Stugs have angled their armour slightly, so it's front armour for the Churchills to hit them. Um, did turn this for Dave so he could fire at the Churchills, and then I realised that I wouldn't actually do anything to them. So um, you'll have to see if he can shoot the M10s, but I doubt he can from his angle that he is. At the moment. So we're going into German shooting for their seventh turn. Uh, German shooting had a bunch of hits on the infantry but they all passed their saves. Uh, over here the Stugs managed to take out another M10 and that was it for German shooting. So going into uh, British turn eight, Sherry has a pin down Canadian platoon by the river rallying on a three plus. Sherry? You rallying on a three plus? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so they have rallied. And then Sherry has a last stand test to do on the M10s. Got you. <laughs> right, we get a reroll from the formation command, who is right next to them. Uh, right, so he sticks around, and then you got a last stand to a test to do on this platoon here. And you get a reroll. I got five. Right, so they are okay. So we're going into British movement for turn eight. Uh, British movement, two guys managed to get over the river, so they're going to try assault again. Um, the wasp again has not got over the wall. The Churchills have moved down the street and the UCs with the HMGs have moved around the hedge. So there we go, there is British movement, and now we're going into their shooting again. Uh, in the shooting, uh, the Falskrim Jäger have lost no one over here. Uh, they lost three ba bases to the Saxtons. Uh, the second in command has been killed thanks to flamethrowers, and the M10s have bailed another uh, Stug. And that is it for shooting. So we're going to be having another assault. So the assault was slightly better for the British. Um, lost one base going in, didn't kill any, but the Falschkenberger and the OP failed their counterattack, so they've had to pull back. And the HQ, uh, the uh, Canadian has um, gone into the foxholes. So that's where we end. And then we're going into the final turn, turn nine, for the British. So turn eight, and it's uh, German turn eight, sorry. So Dave, you have a pin down Falschkenberger team by the objective, uh, by the hill? Yep. Um, on a five, they're rallying. Okay, so those infantry are probably going to go. And then you also have a platoon in the woods. Yep, rallying on a six. And then you have the HQ team in the building. Uh, but they get a reroll because of the formation command. Uh, four. 
Okay, and then you have a bailed out stug as well. Three. Um, I think that's enough, but you get a reroll anyway. They get back in on a three. So yeah, they they're happy with how it's going. So that is the German motivation step done, and they have one, two, three, four teams. So no one's going this turn. And I think it's pretty much game for the Germans. So German movement, uh, the fast screen have moved here to get this guy away from the objective. And the one stug has moved around so he can get a side shot at the Churchills. And the infantry here are going to try and dig in. Dave, on a 3+. plus. Right, so they're dug in, and now we're going into German shooting, and then if the infantry get caught off that objective, it will be game. So far, uh, rifle fire hasn't moved him, so they'll have to assault him off, and once that assault is done, if it's successful, uh, that will be game for the Germans. And in the middle of the town, a Churchill has been taken out by that stug. So, assault for the Germans. So the um, Germans went in, didn't take any hits, and they, Dave rolled five dice for the assault. He rolled four ones and a five, so luckily that, um, he didn't lose any going in. And because the British are outside four inches on this turn, that is it. And the Germans have won the game. So there we go. Uh, Dave didn't lose any units, so it's a stunning victory. So going into the last mission for the D-Day Germans, which is a breakthrough. Um, the allies will have to re-roll their first successful uh, dice for reserves uh, based on the result of this mission. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry for about the um, last stand with these guys. And there we go. Germans win again. The Falskrim Jäger are doing very well in these games. And next mission will be interesting because the Germans get flanking reserves. Uh, and I played this, that game, that mission a few times and it is really interesting. So again, if you enjoyed, please subscribe, please tell all your friends and family about it. Should have plenty of time to watch stuff with everyone being in lockdown. So I'll catch you next time and please everyone stay safe.